Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. 2 Kings chapter 4. The wife of a man from the company of prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two sons as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, Go around and ask all of your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all of the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another one. But he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. So she went and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what's left. One day, Elisha went to Shunem, and a well-to-do woman was there who urged him to stay for a meal. So whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. She said to her husband, I know that this man who often comes our way is a holy man of God. Let's make a small room up on the roof and put in it a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp for him. Then he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came, he went up to his room and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, Call the Shunammite woman. So he called her and she stood before him. Elisha said to him, Tell her, You have gone to all this trouble for us. Now what can be done for you? Can we speak on your behalf to the king or the commander of the army? She replied, I have a home among my own people. What can be done for her then? Elisha asked. Gehazi said, She has no son, and her husband is old. Then Elisha said, Call her. So he called her. And she stood in the doorway. About this time next year, Elisha said, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my lord, she objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead your servant. But the woman became pregnant. And the next year, about that same time, she gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had told her. The child grew, and one day he went out to his father, who was with the reapers. He said to his father, My head, my head. His father told the servant, Carry him to his mother. After the servant had lifted him and carried him to his mother, the boy sat on her lap until noon, and then he died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and went out. She called her husband and said, Please send me one of the servants and a donkey so I can go down to the man of God quickly and return. Why go to him today, he asked. It's not the new moon or the Sabbath. That's all right, she said. She saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Lead on. Don't slow down for me unless I tell you. So he set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When he saw her in the distance, the man of God said to his servant Gehazi, Look, there's the Shunammite. Run to meet her and ask her, Are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your child all right? And she said, Everything is all right. But when she reached the man of God at the mountain, she took hold of his feet. Gehazi came over to push her away, but the man of God said, Leave her alone. She's in bitter distress, but the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me why. Did I ask you for a son, my Lord? She said, Didn't I tell you? Don't raise my hopes. Elisha said to Gehazi, Tuck your cloak into your belt. Take my staff in your hand and run. Don't greet anyone you meet. And if anyone greets you, do not answer. Lay my staff on the boy's face. But the child's mother said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So he got up and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff on the boy's face. But there was no sound or response. 
So Gehazi went back to meet Elisha and told him, The boy has not awakened. When Elisha reached the house, there was the boy lying dead on his couch. He went in, shut the door on the two of them, and prayed to the Lord. Then he got on the bed and lay on top of the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. As he stretched himself out on them, the boy's body grew warm. Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room, and then got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Elisha summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite, and he did. When she came, he said, Take your son. She came in, fell at his feet, and bowed to the ground. Then she took her son and went out. Elisha returned to Gilgal, and there was a famine in that region. While the company of the prophets was meeting with him, he said to his servant, Put on the large pot and cook some stew for all of these prophets. One of them went out into the fields to gather herbs and found a wild vine and picked as many of its gourds as his garment can hold. When he returned, he cut them up into the pot of stew, although no one knew what they were. The stew was poured out for the men, but as they began to eat it, they cried out, Man of God, there's death in the pot, and they could not eat it. Elisha said, Get some flour. He put it into the pot and said, Serve it to the people to eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. A man came from Baal Shalashah, bringing the man of God twenty loaves of barley bread, baked from the first ripe grain, along with some heads of new grain. Give it to the people to eat, Elisha said. How can I set this before a hundred men? His servant asked. But Elisha answered, Give it to the people to eat, for this is what the Lord says. They will eat and have some left over. Then he set it before them, and they ate and had some left over, according to the word of the Lord. So we have a, a long chapter here, friends, with um, uh, many things that happened. But Elisha met this widow, and um, uh, the widow was asking for help because her husband had died. He had been a prophet, too. So uh, Elisha says, what do you have at your house we can work with? And she said, I've got a small jar of olive oil. Now, you may recall that Elijah, Elisha's master, had once multiplied oil with a widow who sustained him during a famine. So he, he does more than replicate that miracle. He tells this widow to go get a bunch of empty jars and start pouring out oil into all of the empty jars and fill them up. And then um, you can take the full jars of oil and uh, use that to sell and pay the debts because apparently the the woman's husband had gone into debt and um, her, her two sons were at risk because of the debt. So she pours oil out until every jar is filled. There's not one jar left. And then Elijah says, go and sell some and pay your debts and keep the rest of it to, um, to live off of. And so then the next story, Elisha goes to a place called Shunem, and he meets a a wealthy woman there, um, the Shunemite woman. And this woman goes to her husband and says, hey, this guy, Elisha, is a man of God. We ought to make a little room in our house um, so he can stay in our house when he comes by. We'll receive a blessing, you know, when he comes by. And the husband says, sure, go ahead. So she prepares a little room. Now, friends, this prophet's chamber um, this pattern is still done to this day. A friend of mine, um, now deceased, used to have keys to many prophets' chambers around the country. I know that he, I forgot how many he had, but he had a, quite a number of them that people had said, hey, we've set up this room for visiting member, uh, ministers. Uh, when you're in town, come stay at our house. And um, by faith, they believed that the Lord would bless them for taking care of the man of God, just like this Shunammite woman. So sure enough, um, Elisha and her, his servant take her up on the thing. And Elisha says, well, what can I do for you? And so we find out she doesn't have a son, that her husband is old and we assume impotent. But Elisha says, um, uh, you're going to have a son. And so sure enough, she gets pregnant and has a son by her husband. But the son dies. He, he lives for a couple of years. Time goes on and he's in the field with his dad. And he falls down sick and then dies. And so the Shunammite woman 
says correctly, I need to get a hold of Elisha. He can do something. His God can do something. So she goes and finds Elisha. Elisha comes back with her to the house, and lo and behold, he raises the boy from the dead. So this powerful, powerful miracle. Once again, just like his master Elijah had raised a boy from the dead, now Elisha raises the dead. And then we have a, a little brief story about um, uh, a gathering of prophets, and uh, they go and make some kind of mystery stew, and it has um, some poisonous gourds in it, and Elisha heals the stew, and everybody eats it, and it's no problem. So there's nothing harmful in the stew. And then finally, Elisha multiplied bread. Um, he multiplied 20 loaves of barley bread into enough bread for 100 men. And so the... Uh, the Lord Jesus, of course, would do this later, but Elisha's master had once multiplied um, bread. And so Elisha is replicating some of the miracles of Elijah and walking in uh, the, a measure of the anointing of Elijah, as we've said previously. But I want to go back to the idea of the, uh, the Shunammite woman blessing the man of God and receiving a blessing. Now, friends, I, I don't want to state this as a manipulative thing. But the truth is, if you do something positive for a man or a woman um, who serves the Lord and you do it as service to the Lord, there's a blessing in it. And so we do need to bless the servants of the Lord, not those who would manipulate you for money, but those who are genuinely serving the Lord and doing the work of the Lord. Friends, whatever you do for them, you're doing it for the Lord, and the Lord will impart a blessing just like he did with this Shunammite woman. And so, Lord, we bless you and we bless your servants. We bless those men and women who truly serve you without wrong motivations. Lord, we recognize that all humans are uh, fallible, that all sin and all have fallen short of the glory of God. But nevertheless, there are those with honorable motivations and honorable callings that they are fulfilling in you. May we bless them and receive a blessing in due season. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.